Twiggle and I could do a great job. <laughs> anyway, so there we are, and uh, they said to me, oh, well, Katie, you know, you're very late, and you're very small. <laughs> now, you know, it doesn't make you feel too good. Uh, you're very late, you're very small, it's like, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Anyway, so they got me to go into this room, and it's this huge rehearsal room um, at the ABC. And ABC, I've been here too long. ABC. <laughs> And they said, now, there's a, a coat stand. You know one of those with the doo 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 hanging off of them? Okay. And on it, there was a fur hat. And we want you to walk into the room all by yourself, and you see the fur hat, and you look at it, there's a fur hat. And suddenly, that fur hat has started to turn into probably the most frightening, evil, monstrous thing that you've ever clapped eyes on. Dallas? Oh! He will see this. Me and my big mouth. Okay. I'll tell you about the big mouth later. Anyway, oh. um, so there I am. There's the hat stand. And I often use this when I'm working with, um, with kids that I teach because it's a very good one.
and uh, you bet you wish you hadn't asked us questions. I'm here to tell you. There's more. And they got a phone call next day, and they said, Would you like to play Joe Brown? So I said, Oh, all right, passed out. And I'd actually watched this show for years. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And this sort of thing you never, I never thought in a million years that I would still have it now. Especially when one found out later, I didn't know then what my competition would be. So, <laughs> so they said there's only one thing we were really worried about is that John's very tall. He's all very small. I said, Yes, he killed me. And uh, so we came to an ounce. I wore the most ludicrous shoes. Right? I even had built up baseball boots. Um, and John spent a lot of his life doing jeans. <laughs> because if he did all I, which I often will show you later, is where I had to appear on screen when he put his hand on his hip. As we all know, John was very, very fond of putting his hand on his hip. Anyway, and um, so I, I actually got the job, which was, was really terrific. But I found out sometime prior to that that I had been at the BBC for something else. And John Pertwee had seen me there. And he said to the then producer, he said, that girl, she's terrific. I think she's gorgeous. Yeah, Ruby Wax and I have a lot more here. Gorgeous? No. Anyway, so um, that was your And he said to the producer, I think she would be terrific. And the producer sort of said, yes, like midgets. <laughs> <laughs> and he also didn't like a lot of people didn't want to be told who she cast. So of course when John saw that it was me, he said, I told you that girl. And the guy remembered then that John had gone into the thing and seen me and said, oh. And that was about oh six months to nearly a year before they actually were recasting the new girl. What was the question? <laughs> well, well, did I answer it? Yeah. 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 Okay, what about the first you day? You were that. <laughs> <laughs> what about the first day? I mean, I take it the first day would have been a rehearsal for something like Terror of the Old or something. You walk in and met and probably, like the first day of full rehearsal, or would be the first episode. My first day, you film before you rehearse. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like that? I mean, I love, I love working in this business. You film before you rehearse. So you, what you do is you go out and you do, if you're doing like six episodes, you go out and you do all the filming for those six episodes, then you go in and you do your rehearsals, which is why it's very interesting to match up what you did on film and the emotions that you felt on film six weeks prior, you have to be able to pick up. <coughs> and because we go out, here's what happens to me, first day, I go out, and I'm so keen, and, you know, I'm one of these people, I get a little bit enthusiastic. Or do you think I'm cool and laid back? <laughs> and, uh, so we, we had to go out, and I had to do this, jump out of this car, and it was the only time in the show that I wore flat shoes. I swear, the only time that I wore flat shoes was on the first one of the terrible walk. Yeah. Yeah. Deep, put on the teeth back, please. <laughs> um, anyway, so I ran out, jumped out of the car, and as I jumped out, I thought, oh, <laughs> and they said, we have to go back and do that again. My leg is really, really hurt. But I'll be brave. <laughs> and I got in the car again, right? I jumped out of the car again. And I went, oh! And then I could feel the tears welling up in the eyes. But I thought, no, I won't say anything. I'll just be really cool. But at this point, you know, when you hurt your leg, it sort of was like I could feel it swelling. And I could feel my boot getting tight, and it was like somebody put cold water down my boot. Well, that's what happens when you break your leg. <laughs> Three times I jumped out of that car until I actually couldn't take the pain any longer. Told somebody it was being noticed by this point. I could take one leg this big, one leg this big. And of course, I was rushed into the hospital. I was put in a plaster cast, and Christopher Doyle Dunham. <laughs> Mr. Doyle and John, who was our PA, came up to me and he said, well, Katie, as this is the first day shooting, we're going to replace you. So not only am I in pain, I am emotionally so stressed out 
you know, I am absolutely, I'm crying, I mean, it was just awful, and then John Murphy came in and three crosses, Chris, go and kill him. And he really told him off. I knew we'd get to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we, I had to, we had to do all the filming and everything with this thing, because then when we got to the studio, my leg was getting slack. Oh, and that's right, the next day, do you know, they said, we'll be very careful to shoot around with Katie's leg. <laughs> um, <laughs> very careful to shoot around Katie's leg. First thing they asked me to do was jump off a wall. Which <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, quickly did that. And because then I had to go over in the studio and I had to live. No. <laughs> so that was my very first. It was all very traumatic. Did you meet Roger Delgado on the first day? Yeah, I learned everybody's lines. I didn't know. I got so confused and I was so nervous that I actually sat up one night learning everybody's lines. <laughs> I knew the Briggs lines. I knew John's lines. I knew the master's lines. I don't think I knew the words playing. <laughs> well, I'll go, you know, I'll take, I'll be sensible. If I learn everybody's lines, they can't take me by surprise. And I found out I was playing the old song. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, I don't, going back to things like, um, you were talking about when you had to make the hat stand with the, the 38 on the test and what's that? Was it, what, how did you, what did you do that? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Well, I think it's really important to know how to do the hat. Yeah. You know, how did you feel when you were having to do sequences and see so when you were just walking in front of the green screen? Like the green I love it because you see, you were looking at a woman who is totally chaotic. I do not know what is going on around me. And in those days, I didn't have lenses. Now I have lenses which are half spread, right? Which means I can see a room. Excuse me, you can Was, you know. And the reason that John and I used to hold hands all the time 
<laughs> the number of times we'd have to run, and I would run to the left, and everybody else runs to the right. <laughs> and because I was always so busy acting, I wouldn't hear them saying, Katie, stop, stop. <laughs> I'm still going, I'm exhausted. I'm running completely wrong, and they're all over there. <laughs> so it was agreed very early, hang on to Katie. And you do, hang on to Katie. <laughs> One of the stories you used to tell, or just I understand you used to tell, was that John Pertwee never remembered his lines. Oh, well, that's just being videoed. No, uh, there's some strange things that happened with that. The, uh, he'd go up to strange areas of the set to put down, is that true? He didn't go over. No. What, what happened? Once. <laughs> First of all, I mean, there was one time I've got one from he, we could put a piece of music. Reverse the polarity or neutral form. So if you put that to music, I think you chose Dolly and Carl Dorf. Reverse the polarity of the neutral form. Right? You remember that? Musical man. All right. And then uh, another time, I, I think it was the Sea Devils or something, there was a guy who had to talk very technically as he gave him an injection or something like that. And he ripped the walkers down in the lid of the tin where the, 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 the needle and stuff was, right? And I'm so busy. I'm listening so intently. I closed the tin. John's <laughs> 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 going, hang, hang, hang. There's only John Cat. <laughs> and then another time we had to do this scene where we had to go in and we had to do this mathematical mm -hmm. equation. Well, yours truly is the same thing, blind things, like that, you know. John hadn't got it together. So they said, it's okay, John, we'll write it on the floor. Fabulous, says John, which would be no good for me, because I've had got the whole thing like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> doing bumps. <laughs> Irish mindset. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, so John, see an Irish woman be on spray deodorant. <laughs> I'm Yeah, but then you can describe it, he's on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's all 
these actors, they're saying, you know, and my line is, look out, Doctor, there's a bomb. <laughs> look out, Doctor, there's a bomb. <laughs> Thirteen times. <laughs> they said, you know, can't we say, look out, Doctor, this is a really bad wind? I mean, <laughs>
in the show. Because I got more and more pregnant with the fat ball, which is one of those really small speckles. It's getting further and further off the ground. <laughs> and these poor kids inside go every night, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, and uh, so, um, and they were, but in fact, I mean, I, mean, I laugh, I jest, but they, they um, were very, very premature, not because of that, I hate to do um, and they were very, very sick, and they got, so they were very underweight, they were one pound two, and one pound eight ounces, now I don't know whether you can imagine that, it's the size, if you think of a five or six pound baby, think of one that's one point two or one point eight. It's very hard, isn't it? It's not that big. Right? And um, so they, they, they all obviously been very weak. And when they finally came out of hospital about five months later, they were still very puny. And um, then they got whooping cots at an age where it was actually a killer. And they were both in hospital again for months and months and months. <laughs> I'm coming, and uh, I'm on, traveling, and um, so they were very, very sick, and I basically had no choice, because after this, everything they got turned into very serious illness, and so I, literally, I left everything, I left my career, I left my house, I left all my positions, and I came to Australia, and here I am. <laughs> Do you get recognised in the street out here as much as you do? Yes, I do. What's weird, actually in America, I got to because I was over there a few years ago. It's interesting. But I'm filming at the moment. I'm doing a, a show for Channel 10. And um, it, the number of people that would come up while we were filming, I can't tell you what I look like. I mean, I'm playing this terrible old hairdresser so that got stuck in the 60s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And she talks like this. <laughs> and, and I had to watch the spaceship land, and they said, now, can you do a really suitable reaction? So at last, and I went, oh my! <laughs> 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 it became the oh my show. So Max Fitz, who is a wonderful actor, and I absolutely thought he was an actor. When I first came over here, he rang up the producers of the chat show I was, and he said, listen, can I come on as a fan? And this is one of your leading actors. <laughs> and he did. And so when I arrived on the film set, he did decide himself. And um, but so it's now yes, it's the one. So the director now is giving the director to write all you know, and you all stand there going, oh, <laughs> so I'm pleased. And a number of people would come up and say, oh, you know, can I have your autograph? Which I found really strange because if you saw me, I've painted that eyeshadow. I, I, I'm dressed in red and pink and orange. And, uh, my usual subtle characterisation. <laughs> Black stockings with crooked seams, you know, and I look like this. I'm darling, I've got his son with his blue hair. And um, anyway, so, and then I always, I always find it fascinating. It's like the, the camera's assistant and a couple of other people came up to me and they said, Well, oh, Katie, um, we have one photograph to take. It's a big man, so he's so I think it's, you know, but it's amazing how many people. <coughs> remember and our fans and I think that's really smashing. I think that's really, really, really nice. So, you know, I'm very flattered that people recognize me. <laughs> to be honest with you, especially um, and that's lovely. So I mean when I'm out filming people do recognise me. You know, when I go into shops sometimes people put down. And what most people do though is they say, these I know your face taxi drivers do as well. And the same in London, and the same in the States, it's interesting. And a lot of people recognize me by my voice. I hear their voice. Are you probably aware that Doctor has been made in the last three years? I know that they haven't done anything, yeah. and there's been all sorts of stuff. I mean, at one point in the days, we're going to find a bright and make it, which will not be. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, they're, they're, they're making them up with that might. They might have been making a movie over the last eight years. Um, <laughs> you imagine the actors are all eight years old and this kid who was playing a three-year-old in it, right? He's now looking for a job. <laughs> and also, the, there was... I, <laughs> I, I just have to say, no, I can't say that. No, no, no. No, no, no. I get these little men to say, that's why I got it. It's a whole Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there might be a chance, uh, might have been a chance of playing coming out here. I know, I was asked. So you were asked. I swear, they asked Kylie Minogue. 
Lodge Simpson voice for a few And then I did the Queen for Queen Adelaide Wise. Um, I've just done a whole bunch of good things stuff. I played Goannas, I played Koalas, I played Emma Cat. Wait till you hear my whiskey. My cat is cool. Right now, the new show, Fight the Meow. <laughs> the rest is, is sort of advocate because the case of the little mice in the belly thrown in. <laughs> but no, I do a lot of voice. The only one that's going out of the little Everett moment is this appalling, really straight commercial they want to done in 45 seconds, which I had to tell you. It means you deep, take a deep breath and you go, and it was for a job position. It's been running for a month now. It obviously didn't work because nobody wants a job. It's like, well, it's a good job. I'll take that. <laughs> So yeah, I loved my voice, especially doing the Blinky Bill tapes and things like that. You know, I mean, I think I played 25 creatures. Great fun. I enjoyed voice work. Are you friendly to go on TV stations? Um, <laughs> it was a great picture. No, no, it's just changing the film. All right. Would you think that they Do you know that was, do you know you're not a stupid are you? That's a kind of situation. I mean you're cute and that would be a good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean I think that the um and all the, the, the trout and actors, I mean he would be a lovely follow-up to it. Do you know why we won't know who this man is? I don't know. And people laugh when I say, but I know he played a man as well. He's an act called Lionel Blair. He's also a dancer. He would mix in brilliantly, but I know he'd be good because to me, what John Pertwee had, and certainly, and, and Pat Troughton had as the doctor, they had this kind of ethereal quality, you know, this magic around them. Could you actually believe they could be 2,000 years old? Do, do you know what I mean? There was nothing earthly about them. It was just, I can't, I can't really find the words that I need except ethereal. This feeling that they would be. <laughs> um, and they just, just that something, that certain magic they had around them. And, and Lionel Blair has this too. If I was constantly. Now, do you know what I'd love to do? I would love to use the door. Oh, you don't. Because I think if I paint somebody who knows it well, to do it. Yes, no. Dear sir, my name. Any more questions? Sorry? Somebody speak on whistles. Nothing. I saw you in white spirit a couple of years ago. Are you, do you still uh, <laughs> uh, do you enjoy theatre or uh, film? I love it all. I mean, I can answer that question very, very quickly. I love it. I love it. That's all it has to do with me. What is it now? 24 years? <laughs>
you know, on that level. Because if I start now, do I need another six hours? You know, the other. <coughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, when we do that, we do all that in one little do for do. Do for do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any last questions from the audience? It's not Fred. It's not Fred. It screams well. Come on, come on. Stand up the screen and ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> screen the game now, I bet. I will do that. I love you. <laughs> Not if you do, I, I'm trying to do something. But you'll let me know when it's on. Will you call me up and say, hey, thank you? You're on. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be really embarrassing because I'm I found this tremendous character in this. I mean, when you see this character, that was appalling. It's because you're given license to be as actually potty as you like. Well, that's a very dangerous thing to do. <laughs> Don't give me any theatrical license at all. <laughs> okay. Questions? More questions? More questions? Yes. Yeah, do you know, the one thing you learn as an actor, and you learn this a long time, um, when you're, while you're at graduate school, you might have learned this, is called, if you're going to be out of work, which you are, most of the time, be out of work creatively. Never just sit around and think about being out of work and thinking that the world is for living. If you take a job that you really, really love to do, that you're involved in the arts, you set that you're going to spend a lot of time out of work, so don't you sit on your bum and moan. But I think that applies to everybody. We should all start coming together and start doing something instead of sitting around saying, ah, it's all spoiling the mat, there's no jobs for anybody. Be creative. If everybody gets together, we can all create our own work. I mean, my friend, but then it be Jane Whiteley and I, are hurtling around creating stuff right now, you know? It's no good just sitting back and saying, there's nothing here, there's plenty here, but it's up to us to make it. And sometimes that means working real hard for nothing. I mean nothing. And the only thing I can say about this business is that if you've actually, and I mean, as I say, that little bit applies to all jobs. I'm tired of hearing it just whinge. But if, you, if you're going to, to be in that situation and you actually say, I've made a living from acting, you know, one day we're really rich and the next day we're really poor. You've made a living from acting, and as far as I'm concerned, you've been successful in your chosen career. You know, um, being a star to me is not the end of the line. What, what really works is being involved, being an actor, being able to take, like I go and teach underprivileged children who work with lots of charities. There are so many areas that you can use with just one stem of being an actor. You can produce, you can direct, which is what I'm about to do as well. You can do voices, you can do TV, you can work with kids who would normally be able to get drunk or dance and go into some teaching. So I mean, there's always something that you can create. Great, I love it. <coughs> really good. Have you taught uh, around the world? Oh, yeah. I teach um, to underprivileged children. And I work in a variety of other jobs. And, um, oh, I think mean, he's getting ready to give us. Oh, yeah. I can see how he's got that look. I mean, just to interrupt there, Dallas Jones is an extraordinarily important person. Uh, is they, Jane Richardson, or Scott, and or Scott McLaughlin in the room? Could I come over and see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because I'm home and see me now. Thank you. Because your mummy wants to know why you're not home yet. <laughs> 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 I'll miss the mark. I've gone the wrong way. He's turned right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't with Steve then, he was turned left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, is there any, are we nearly, I keep feeling that you want me to go and then you tell me to stay. No, I'm not. If you want yes. to feel that you wanted to go and you had yeah. yeah. the feeling that you wanted to stay, stay go, stay go. Um, Oh, you've seen quite a lot of Dr. Curves, and you've been involved with it. What did you think of how it went after you left the series? The Colin Baker, the Colin Baker era. Oh, you mean that much later? And Ace coming in. What did you think? Can that be really obvious? Yeah, some, not much. I haven't seen the school best to do the stuff. So I don't know, I can't comment on that area. Um, you're talking about two actors who took over subsequently who I really respect. One was um, yeah, the other. <laughs> Peter Davison. I really respect Peter's work. And Colin, I've worked with anyway a lot. He played my husband for a long time. Um, and I really respect them as actors. But I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't think they were Doctor Who. I them. In my opinion, I did not enjoy the show. 
something started to happen. Was it the actor? Was it was it like you feel the character of the dog? I didn't like Bobby Landers. I didn't. 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 I did